who really are the market participants we really need to understand that and i'm talking about each and every kind of uh, you know participant that enters into the market i'm not talking about regulators at the moment so now that we have come such a long way of understanding almost everything that we need to know to trade cryptocurrencies when you're just starting off uh, these couple of sections you know i want to really un- make you understand what kind of players are participating in the market although we covered some sections um, you know previously where we covered what kind of roles that we take as market participants you know whether we are investors or traders but all of those were mindsets but who really are the market participants we really need to understand that and i'm talking about each and every kind of uh, you know participant that enters into the market i'm not talking about regulators at the moment but i'm ta- talking about what kind of roles that a normal uh, individual or an institution come in as so we have discussed uh, this in uh, you know volumes in previous videos in terms of uh, you know how you can consider them uh, uh, to be in what capacity uh, entering into the market as a participant whether whether do we consider them because of the volume that they trade or uh, maybe their approach what they have towards the market whatever we choose i think we can divide these market participants broadly into two categories one is the retail market and the other is the institutional uh, market where professional institutions are uh, are coming in so let's just look at uh, look at this into detail so retailers or retail market are people who have a mindset uh, approach of a small trader and have a capital below a few hundred uh, crores uh, to be you know at the top people who do not uh, own businesses um, are involved in this process the people who don't run sophisticated trading companies or exchanges or funds or any other financial institution specifically working in the trading and investing business uh, are considered to be retail uh, uh, players and this is the definition of uh, you know all of us uh, are are basically retailers all right so these are the people who are either part time traders or investors or are full time but their capital like i said we looking at the quantity here is lesser than a few hundred crores the second and very important is the institutions or individuals with huge capital resources who conduct businesses professionally and are often managing money for others uh institutions can be anything like banks or hedge funds probably even uh, you know other portfolio management services big investment banks anybody who basically has a lot of clients and are managing money for them um, you know enter into this category all um, of those sophisticatedly trained uh, individuals um, you know which are with them who who manage money for others as an institution with a mindset of a bigger player is usually called an institution this means that they are highly sophisticated and have advanced trading uh, methods they also approach trading markets in a very different manner than you know us usual retail traders now that we have spoken about uh, the institutions and the retailers it's time for a reality check <clears throat> we have discussed so many aspects of technical analysis trading and investing it may seem easy now that you have learned it now comes the hard part 90% of retailers will lose money most of the time this is because the institutions compete against other institutions and retailers like us die in crossfires imagine a battle in the you know pre- uh, ancient times where armies fought and civilians were killed without any reason that is exactly how the market functions statistical and by observation over the past century we have seen that institutions mostly have an upper hand uh, in regulating and operating efficiency of the markets this is simply because we don't have enough money to move markets on how to make the institutions you know kind of interested in us to give you a very small example say you entered a position and you took a trade and then you put a stop loss of around 10000 or 20000 rupees a lot of times we feel that the market moved below and fell just to hit our stop loss but the reality of the situation is that for an institutional position this was a position of a th- several thousand crores just to you know it was not just to hit your stop loss but maybe many other people's stop loss markets don't operate just for us we seem to believe that but that's where we are wrong and we are not that important to the market that we feel 
all right so there's certain things that we can do to change our approach towards the market to benefit from the newly found insight that we uh, we have here which will be discussed in the next uh, section